A very good afternoon to all of you. I welcome you back to our particular course that is management control system and it has been coded as MMPF 003. Uh, in the last session we heard, that means the fourth session, we already had entered into block 2. At the beginning of block 2, that means the last session, we saw the unit 4 which talked about responsibility centers. Now, there we saw the whole organization can be divided into units or segments which are headed by a particular distinct manager. Now there we talked about the delegation of authority to the manager. When we say delegation of authority, we meant that he can direct, he or she can direct and ask the subordinates to work in order to reach the targets. Now along with the delegation of authority, we saw the manager is responsible for achieving the targets. And if there are any deviations, then the manager is also accountable for that. We cannot pass on as a manager that we have not taken any action which has been harmful. If it is in our ambit and our action or the activities have hampered the organization's strategic directions or the goals to be achieved, there we say, yes, the delegation of authority has failed or the manager has not performed according to his or her expectation. So there in the responsibility centers, we said for each segment, a particular manager is responsible. We also saw that responsibility centers can be divided into cost centers, the revenue centers, the profit centers, and finally the investment centers. Now, when we talked about this thing, cost center, we just said that these are the segments where the activities where costs are incurred are given to the managers. When we talk of only revenues or the sales amount generated in a particular segment that we call as revenue center. Now, if both revenue and cost are there in a particular segment, then we call them as the profit centers. And looking at the long term plans of the organization, the strategic direction it is adopting to achieve those long term objectives or goals, the company or the organization has to move into new fields into expansion of the existing fields etc so when we do that we invest or try to use our capital to enhance the future of the company those are called as investment centers particularly we can say the project divisions. Now, in today's session, 
that is unit 5 of block 2 we shall be focusing on cost centers now what is a cost center first let us see now it is first of all a responsibility center because a manager is responsible for the activities that is occurring in that particular center or segment or the unit now what kind of activity the activities which are related only to cost for example activities which are related to cost we can say that they may be the production segment they can be the processing segment they can be the procurement segment so here the manager is responsible for the activities in terms of cost control now when we are talking of cost control we try to see how best we can have the activities done with the lowest possible cost now the total performance of manager depends on how effectively and efficiently the output is achieved now when we are saying effective in order to achieve the output the effective here means that how much output we are getting by using a certain amount of inputs so it is the relationship of outputs to the inputs now when we are talking of efficient then we are talking of how well we are doing the things now when we are talking of effective it can be mathematically related but when we are talking about efficiency we are talking of a subjective matter how well one can do it has to be perceived so financial performance because all the activities the outputs or the inputs are measured in terms of monetary and the financial performance is measured by whether tasks are accomplished within the budgeted amount we prepare the budget fast before the actual thing starts now at certain points of time we try to take the actuals and compare that with the budgeted amounts so that we can see for the activities that has been completed or accomplished whether we are doing within the budget or we are overshooting the budget our objective should be or our responsibility is that as a manager of that unit that we have to adhere or have the accomplishment of works below the budgeted amount now when we are looking at types of cost centers we are talking about the relationship between inputs and outputs just now we said we can measure outputs and inputs in monetary terms and here the relationship is measured that means how much resources in form of inputs has been used and how much outputs have been generated here we talk about two things efficiency and effectiveness just now we had said the same thing when we are talking of efficiency we are talking of how well 
we are doing the things and when we are talking of effectiveness that means how well we are using the resources now the various types of cost centers that we find in general are first is personal now any segment a unit of the organization where persons or human beings generate the cost or their activities brings about the creation of cost that we call as personal cost centers for example we can say the finance department is a personal cost center the office and administration is a personal cost center similarly we can have impersonal cost centers now what are these impersonal cost centers we can say that uh, suppose a particular machine is there it will be creating some costs while it is running it will be consuming various kind of utilities various kind of resources in order to generate the outputs but here it is not a living thing it is a impersonal cost centers for example we can say the production wing we can also say the tools segment or the tools manufacturing segment etc production cost centers now when we are talking of production cost centers here we talk about the inputs being converted into outputs that means the conversion system in the converse, conversion system various resources in the form of materials labor and machineries are used to convert a given set of inputs into the desired outputs so when the outputs are products we say that it is a production cost center similarly we can have service cost center now when we are talking of service cost centers what is a service center let us first see suppose there is a particular department called as maintenance department it is not directly linked with the production of output but it is required to have the smooth and continuous running of the production line it has been created for the production center now this maintenance department definitely will be having its own cost so that will be called as the service cost center another example we can take suppose is the housekeeping we know that in factories many kind of wastes the darts the oils greases etc they spoil the surroundings where the things are being manufactured and a particular department may be there in order to clean those items from time period to time period or at regular intervals so that particular housekeeping department we may call it as 
the surface cost centers. Similarly, we can also have the time keeping department. What it does, it tries to see how the employees or the persons at what time they are arriving, at what time they are leaving the organization. Now, it is not directly associated with production line, but it is needed so that the production line can run smoothly. Another type of cost center is operation, the operation cost center. Now here in operation, what happens when the outputs are both products as well as services? We say that it is a operation cost center. Another is the process. In many industries, we say that the items are produced from the input stage to the final output stage by moving it through different processes. Suppose let us say process 1, process 2, process 3. The inputs will be moving in a sequential manner from process 1 to process 2 to process 3 and from process 3 it will get out as output. Now each process will be generating some kind of cost for processing the items. <clears throat> so these are called as process cost centers. For example, in a automobile manufacturing industry, we say they follow suppose a process production system. That means the inputs will be moving through various processes that will come out as final output that may be an automobile, car or motorcycle. Now, suppose a particular process is engine department. There, costs related to fitment of engine or the making of engine and fitting it to the body will be incurred. So that can be identified as a process cost center. Now when we are discussing types of cost centers, basically we shall focus our discussion on two things. One is engineered cost centers, another one is the managed cost centers. Now, when we look at engineered cost centers, here some kind of causal relationship or mathematical relationship <coughs> or <coughs> engineering relationship can be established between the inputs and the outputs. Suppose I say in a particular industry, in order to produce 1 kg of output, we require 2 kgs of inputs. Now here a relationship is established. 2 kgs of input will give us 1 kg of output. Suppose I require 10 kgs of output. Immediately I will say that I have to use 20 kgs of input because the relationship is 2 units of input gives us 1 unit of output. So a causal relationship can be brought into picture here which can be mathematical or engineered. 
Now here we can say inputs and outputs can be measured in monetary terms. Why monetary terms the inputs and outputs? Because inputs may be something different, having different terms. Outputs can be different also or different units. Unless we bring them into a particular common kind of terms or denomination, it becomes very easy, a very hard to establish a relationship. So what we do? We convert the inputs that has been used and the outputs that has been generated in monetary terms. So once they are converted into monetary terms, our comparisons become easier. Now, whenever we are having engineered cost centers, we go by standard cost system or we use the standard costing. What is that standard costing? We shall see later on in this session, but here we can say a standard or a relationship is established whereby the amount of inputs can be predicted for getting a required amount of output. This is compared with the actual usage of inputs to get the outputs. So any kind of deviation will be called as variance. Variances can be in both ways, that means it can be beneficial or it can be, we can say, uh, adverse to the company. In other words, beneficial means favorable variance, if it is negative variance or adverse variance, we call it as unfavorable variance. So, the responsibility manager should always try to avoid a situation where negative variances are going to occur or are occurring. Now, this can be applied, this particular system of comparison can be applied or engineered cost centers are tasks where they are repetitive. That means repetition of work goes on. The products produced are same and routine. That means on a regular basis we go on producing the same thing. Now, as we said, the second important type of cost center are managed cost centers. Now, what are these managed costs? Now, these are discretionary costs. We may incur them or we may not incur them. It is up to the management or the level of hierarchy where it is to be decided whether they will go for those activities cost or they will try to avoid those activities. So, some of the examples here are suppose advertising. We say that through advertising we can generate higher amount of sales volume. But when the question arises, how much higher, then it is or it becomes very difficult to answer. Because there is a no clear relationship between the inputs and outputs, which was happening in 
engineered cost centers. So here we can say advertising. Some may argue that if we spend more, our sales volume may go upwards. No, it may not be that like. If we advertise less also, sometimes then the sales volume may rise. Similarly, creation of new building. If we are going to build new blocks, it will incur cost. But will it give us some kind of benefits? The answer becomes ambiguous because there is a no clear relationship between creation of the buildings and achieving the objectives or enhancing the objectives. Same is regarding the R&D, research and development. Not all the research and development works bring about success to the company. Most of them fail, but still companies go for R&D because whatever the less chances of success rate is there, they may bring substantial benefits to the company in the future period of time in the long run. So we say that there is no clear relationship, but some kind of relationship is existing. Though it is difficult, it is according to the experience, according to the hunch of the top management that they may use this type of costs. Now here, this managed costs, the actual managed costs are compared with predetermined costs or in other words, the budgets. We say the performance is efficient if we are doing the activities within budgets. In other words, we say living within budgets is efficient performance. Now, how shall we measure the performance of engineered cost centers that we shall see first. We said in engineered cost centers that we shall be adopting the standard costing. Now what are standard costing? We first establish certain standards for the inputs that are going to be used. Now these standards are predetermined by management based on their experience. So over the years, the experience they have in them, they are looking at various kind of situations. They predetermine what should be the cost of the inputs. So we call them as predetermined costs or in other words, standard costs are predetermined by managers. Now when we are talking of the standard costing system, we say it is the process of comparing the actual costs with standard costs for any activity. Here, when we compare it, we find out the variances or the difference between the actual and the standard costs. Now, if there are variances, it can be in both ways mathematically. It can be positive, it can be negative. Positive variances, yes. 
it is beneficial to the organization but we shall look into reasons what brought about this positive variance so that in future we can use it more and more to get positive results looking at the other thing the other way round we say if the variance is negative that means actuals are higher than the standards for any activity the negative variance will occur which is detrimental to the organization's requirement now this we should do away with and we should search for reasons why this negative variance has occurred so that it will not be repeated in future times now this standard costing we can apply for various inputs like materials wages overheads and also for sales so we shall see how they are calculated for material and wages as well as for other things the overheads and the sales now here we have taken an example first is as we said material variance that means what are the variance that arise due to the material inputs here an example is given let us see we have been given standard conditions we also have been given the actual conditions under standard condition we find 50 kilos of material has been used and the standard rate or the predetermined rate was rupees 7 per kilo whereas actually we have used 60 kilos of materials at an actual rate of 8 rupees per kg per kilo now we shall try to find out what are the various material variances now when we talk of material variances the total variance of material is calculated by material cost variance or in other words it is mcv material cost variance and it is calculated as the standard cost of materials minus actual cost of materials sq stands for standard quantity sr stands for standard rate aq stands for actual quantity ar stands for actual rate now let us see how we can calculate that now i shall be taking the information from the given thing and we shall be calculating when we are calculating according to the formula standard quantity is 50 into standard rate is 7 rupees minus actual quantity is 60 into actual rate is 8 that gives us 
थ्री फिफ्टी माइनस फोर एटी दैट इज इक्वल टू ए सी ए नेगेटिव वी डोंट सो नेगेटिव हियर we are having a variance negative variance of 130 negative variance is shown as unfavorable u stands for unfavorable or negative variance we don't show the symbol here if it is positive then we say it within bracket as f f is positive variance u is unfavorable or negative variance so total material variance is found out by material cost variance that we found as 130 rupees as unfavorable this is denominated in term of rupees now material cost variance can be divided into two things material price variance or variance due to standard price and actual price and usage variance that means the standard quantity used and the actual quantity used now let us see material price variance material price variance is equal to actual quantity that is 60 into standard rate s r stands for standard rate that is 7 minus actual rate is 8 per kilo that is equal to we can say 60 into minus 1 that is rupees negative 60 we don't show the negative sign So rupees sixty unfavorable. Similarly, now we move on to material usage variance. It is standard rate. Standard rate here is rupees seven into standard quantity is fifty kgs minus. Actual quantity is sixty. So this gives us again a negative one because the this term is minus ten. Here it is minus one. So minus ten into seventy gives us rupees seventy. In negative terms, so we write it as unfavorable. We have seen the total cost variance of materials. That is, material cost variance comprises of two components: price as well as usage variance. So, this usage and price, if we combine them, they should be equal to material cost variance. material cost variance is equal to material price variance plus material usage variance now let us see our price variance is rupees 60 on favorable usage variance is rupees 70 on favorable on favorable means both are in negative terms so that gives us rupees 130 in negative terms that is unfavorable now you check this and this both are same so these two components the price variance and the usage variance will combine to give us the cost variance this is how we calculate the material variance 
Similarly, let us go for labor variance. Here we take another example for labor. We have the standard conditions and the actual things that has been used. Here under standard conditions, labor has been utilized for 25 hours and the standard rate is rupees 2 per hour. Actual for the activity is 20 hours at a rate of rupees 2.50 per hour. So let us find out what are the various labor variances. Just similar to material variances, first is labor cost variance or the total labor variance. That is, SH is standard hours. When we say standard hours, it is 25 into standard rate is 2. That means standard cost of standard labor actual hours is 20 into the actual rate is 2.5 so that is equal to 50 minus 50 that is equal to rupees 0. So here there is no variance between the standard and actual. Actually the manager is going as per the predetermined things of the standard things. Now, just as in materials, the total labor variance can be divided into two components. The labor price or the rate variance and the labor, here it is efficiency variance. Let us see. Labor rate variance is equal to actual hours. That is 20 into standard rate that is 2 minus actual rate <coughs> that is equal to 20 into minus 0 0.50 that is equal to rupees we shall not use negative here is 10 since it is negative it is unfavorable now let us come to labor efficiency variance that means how well we are using the labors it is standard rate that is rupees 2 per hour into standard hours used are 25 minus actual hours have been so actual hours is 20 so this gives us a figure of 2 into 5 that is positive that is equal to rupees 10 positive. So since it is positive, we write favorable. Negative is unfavorable, positive is favorable. Now we can check material cost variance. The two components should add up. Price variance is rupees 10 unfavorable plus rupees 10 favorable. In other words, this is negative, 
this one is positive so minus 10 plus 10 gives us a result of rupees 0 now you cross check these two combined to give us which has been established by This is labor cost variance is equal to labor red variance, labor efficiency. the formula for labor and we find yes the two components are giving us the total labor cost so we can calculate for material labor that we have seen through examples to calculate the various kind of variances and similarly also we can also calculate for overheads now, when we go for discretionary cost centers, we said the relationship establishment is very difficult here between the inputs and the outputs. In engineered cost centers, we could maintain the relationship and would apply the standard costing so thereby what was happening now with the help of standard costing we could locate the variances whether it is positive variance or it is negative variances now looking at the variance we try to see what are the reasons behind it and take corrective actions so that it is controlled or it is not repeated in the future period of time. But that becomes difficult in case of discretionary cost centers. So how can we measure performance? Now here we basically focus on the budgeting. Now when we say budget, we say it considers the magnitude of task, a task. In simple terms we can say budget is the amount of expenditure that may be done for a task which is based on past experience. We have used the term budgets, we have heard about the term budget. Now budget is always prepared for future period of time. And once it is prepared, we have to stick to that budget. We cannot change it during the budgeting period. So when we talk of budget, we try to say these are the activities that will go on and the costs that has been set for the activities are this much. If we are performing and the cost of actual cost is below the budget, we say we are doing it well within the budget. If it is above the budget, then we are saying we are crossing the limits of the budget. We are overspending. Now here we talk also about management 
by objectives MBO. We try to focus on what are the objectives of the organization. Now these objectives can be achieved by which specific tasks. Now for these specific tasks, what are the budgets that should be prepared? So we call it as management by objectives. Similarly, we also have flexible budgeting. Why? Now when we use the term budget, we say budget is rigid. Once done for a budgeting period, it cannot be changed easily. But what happens in flexible budgeting? Now we prepare budgets for different activity levels or operational levels. We may say that operational levels may start from 0%, it can run to 100%. So we suppose prepare the budgets for 0%, 10%, 20%, 30%, like this up to 100% budget level. Then what happens? Actually suppose we are performing at 60% operational level. Then we look at 60% level of operation budget. Thereby, the rigidity of budget is done away with. Another way of budgeting is incremental budgeting. Now, this was a traditional method Mostly, it was used in earlier days, incremental budgeting. What we did over that, or there, we prepared the budget based on past year's budget with some kind of enhancement. That enhancement may be based on the inflation rate, the economic conditions, that has been forecasted, the government regulations, the taxation policies, etc. That means to the previous year's budget or the previous period's budget, we add a certain percentage or enhance it by a certain percentage and we say that this is the budget for the coming period. That means we try to enhance or increment, put some increment in the earlier budget levels. Nowadays, we have come to a new system of budgeting called as ZBP, Zero Based Budgeting. Uh, in earlier days, what was happening? Uh, we are using incremental budgeting. It is all right, we based on our past experience, but in case of zero based budgeting, the name says zero base. That means it will not depend upon any kind of past things. Do not look back, zero base. We do not have anything of the past. So how can we prepare the budget? Now, as the responsibility center manager, I have to justify to my senior managers or senior level managers that for this particular segment, we want to carry out this, these activities in the forthcoming period. And for that, the budget is this much. 
we have to justify our activities what we are going to do in the forthcoming period how much we shall be spending and how much are the benefits that are going to accrue out of that so you have to start from scratch you have to make your superiors understand that is your activity can move towards the goals of the organization or can enhance the organization's performance so we call that as zero based budgeting no previous experience no previous data justify what you are going to do in the future period of time if the top management is satisfied they will approve your budget then came balanced scorecard which was developed by kaplan and norton in early 1990s now here this balanced scorecard it translates company's vision into a set of performance metrics now when we say performance metrics we talk on one side as the financial metrics on the other side we have the business process the customer and the learning and growth now we try to match the financial metrics to the other three that is business process customer and learning and growth suppose business process what is the technology we are using what is the kind of machinery we are using what is the modernization we shall be adopting in the future period of time that means those activities which will lead to enhancement of financial metrics looking at the customer side we can say that yes customer also have expectations in form of various requirements features price after sale service etc etc so how can we meet those demands of the customers so that our business grows or we shall be getting more financial benefits out of the market then the third aspect is learning and growth as a organization goes on doing the things repeatedly it brings about a knowing thing into the organization called as learning now in order to produce one unit suppose i am taking one hour the second unit may take me less time that is 40 minutes so as we learn more and more we get faster and faster or the output gets higher and higher and it helps us financially to grow nowadays one of the widely used costing techniques is abc activity based costing it is carried out and cost of each activity is calculated it is mainly done for allocating the factory expenses on some suitable basis to the various products or the various production departments as we said factory expenses are split into cost of materials production and support it is basically identification and allocation of cost which are jointly done to 
the various particular products let us see here we have an example we have activities setup is 1 lakh rupees machine maintenance is 80000 these are for previous years now product a we have produced 100 units and product b we have produced suppose Two hundred units. The number of setups are given, machine hours are given respectively for A and B. Now we have to allocate the cost. Now what is the setup cost? How many total setups are done? Now we can say 30 plus 70 that is 100 and it has costed us 1 lakh rupees. So cost setup cost is 1 lakh divided by 100 that is equal to rupees 1000 per setup. Now here a requires how many setups? Now here we find 30 setups A has taken up. So 30 into 1000. So A will be having a share of 30,000 setup cost. Similarly, B will be having 70 into 1000 that is equal to rupees 70,000 out of the total 1 lakh. Similarly, machine maintenance you see total is 80,000 divided by total hours is 5000 hours. So, per hour it is rupees 16. How much is charged to A? Now we can say uh, 2000 into 16 that is equal to 32,000. So manufacturing cost per unit when we are going to find out for A, total is for A 30,000 plus 32,000 that is 62,000 we have spent per A divided by how many units? Now it is 100 units. So cost per unit manufacturing cost is 620 units. Similarly, we can do it for B. We can control the cost or cost can be non-controllable. With this, we shall end up our session. Thank you.